Good morning, everyone. Elders, chiefs, health professionals, and delegates. Uh, good morning, and it's wonderful to be back. This is my fourth trip uh, to this event, um, and I would also like to recognize um, that we are meeting today on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people, and I want to thank them for their hospitality. It's a pleasure. I'm delighted to be uh, here at the Chief's Assembly for this historic decision you are about to make. Um, it's also a pleasure for me again to be back with you all uh, at the annual, uh, fourth annual uh, gathering uh, wisdom. These forms are an important part of the development of the tripartite health, um, First Nations health plan. They reflect our commitment to be accountable, to work together, and to keep each other informed of our progress every step of the way. There is an added importance to this year's meeting because you will discuss, you will debate, and you will make a decision on the proposed new direction for health governance for your people, for First Nations in British Columbia. In June of 2007, my predecessor, the Honorable Tony Clement, added his signature to the First Nations Tripartite Health Plan. It was also signed by the Honorable Gordon Campbell, Premier of British Columbia, Grand Chief Edward John of the First Nations Summit, Grand Chief Stuart Phillip of the Union of British Columbia Indian Chiefs, and Chief Sean Atlio. That document was a commitment to work together to improve the health outcomes of First Nations people. Since then, British Columbia, First Nations, the government of British Columbia, the government of Canada have been building a new tripartite partnership. The willingness to work together on health care has already been demonstrated in several ways. There was our joint effort on H1N1, the chronic disease pilot projects, and the development of an integrated telehealth network. An important element of the tripartite health plan, plan was a commitment to build a new structure for the governance of First Nations health services in British Columbia. We want to see Health Canada's role evolve with respect to Br British Columbia First Nations. We want to continue to be a partner with First Nations and the province in the governance of health for First Nations. And we want to continue to fund First Nations health services and programs, but we think that British Columbia First Nations need to have a greater control over how health services are de developed and how they are delivered. I am also pleased that the negotiators from the three parties have successfully negotiated the draft framework agreement for a new First Nations health governance structure. As delegates, you, have, you will have an opportunity to review the draft and debate its merits. But let's take a look at some of the highlights. The draft agreement includes provisions for First Nations health authority. It would take over the responsibilities of Health Canada's regional office for First Nations in British Columbia. Health Canada would continue to be actively involved in the implementation of the new governance structure to make it a success. My department's experts would continue to be available to support their counterparts at the First Nations Health Authority. The proposed framework agreement also contains important commitments by the provincial government that includes improving access to health services, improving collaboration between the provincial health authorities, the First Nations health providers, and adapting provincially funded health services to better meet the needs of First Nations. What we are doing is building a better, more integrated, a more responsive health system for First Nations in British Columbia. 
It will ensure that First Nations have equitable access to quality services. It will create a continuum of care without creating separate parallel health systems. Better services for First Nations people will mean better health outcomes, and that is the ultimate goal we all share here today. If the proposed framework agreement is supported by British Columbia First Nations, I will take it back to my colleagues for consideration and a decision by the federal government. Throughout your deliberations, keep this in mind. This can be done. It has been done in the Northwest Territories and in my home territory of Nunavut. I have been committed to uh, this process and believe that this is the only way and the best way to improve the health outcomes of Aboriginal people in Canada and First Nations people in British Columbia. The federal government is committed to building a healthier future for British Columbia First Nations people. And we know that we get better results when decisions are made closer to home, when decisions are made by First Nations people for First Nations people. It's been five years since uh, we began the discussions. Tomorrow you will deliberate and decide how best you want health delivered in your communities and by who. So I want to wish you all the best tomorrow in your discussions and in your deliberations. So thank you for having me this morning. Minister Glukak, I want to formally thank uh, the minister. My name is Wikininish from Ahauzit. I am a New Channels representative on the First Nations Health Council. And on behalf of all of us, I want to express our appreciation to the minister reappointed to that Ministry of Health, understanding very much that she is a champion back home in terms of health amongst her people. And now she's the champion for all of Canada in terms of health. And we appreciate very much the work that you've done. We know how strongly you have advocated for this process to move forward, and we want to express our appreciation. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, we can finish. Uh, on your behalf, the minister has been presented with the, uh, the medal, which was given to last night to the uh, former members of the Leadership Council and former members of the Health, Health Council, who, and current members, actually, who have helped us to get uh, here. And as you'll note, Madam Minister, it is prepared by Corrine Hunt uh, from Alert Bay here on the Vancouver Island, who also co-designed the Olympic medals. And you may notice as you go through the uh, morning that there are a good tw dozen of those or so being worn around the room. Um, Madam Minister, we did talk a little bit about some of the questions that were raised. As a part of the ongoing discussion that's been had, the regions that you see gathered here and that you saw enter the room so uh, beautifully this morning um, had an opportunity to carry on those discussions and to develop some questions. We've, we've tried to summarize the questions as much as we could, and so I'll just ask you if you could respond to them, and I'll uh, put, uh, just put them on the floor, as it were. So what are the federal government's ongoing commitments and expectations for this health partnership after the First Nations and Inuit Health, um, health, uh, health Branch or Finney's resources are transferred to a First Nations Health Authority. Thank you. Um, as I stated earlier in my comments that 
uh, we will be an ongoing partner uh, through this process, and once a decision is made, we're move, we are moving forward. The federal government will continue to be a partner. We will be part of the governance structure. At the same time, uh, we will continue to be the funding partner uh, in a delivery of health care services uh, in British Columbia. At the same time, this will be the first time in, in history where we have provincial government, First Nations, as well as the federal government governing uh, the delivery of health care services in uh, the jurisdictions as in, in partners. So we'll continue to be a part of that. The other thing I want to say that um, the agreement that uh, we're looking for um, does not uh, change the um, fundamentals of the Canada Health Act and, and as well as the delivery of uh, the responsibilities of the province of um, provincial health services, but what it does is that it brings um, all parties together and for the first time uh, it will include First Nations to be part of uh, making decisions on how to uh, deliver health care services for First Nations people and we will be a partner to that on an ongoing basis. Okay. Thank you. What are the risks of First Nations not providing their support for their agreement and as well, what are some of the benefits and opportunities? The biggest risk, why are we doing this? Um, I think we need to go back to that um, very question. We're doing this because we have huge health disparities between Aboriginal people and rest of Canadians. So the risk of not looking at different ways of developing a governance structure to address health outcomes of Aboriginal people, uh, that's the risk. It will continue to get worse. We need to look at innovative ways of working together and in including uh, First Nations people to be part of um, developing programs, to be part of how better we can deliver health care to our people. That's the risk. The benefits of it all is that ultimately, at the end of the day, the provinces, the federal government, and all of you here, we're looking to achieve one thing, and that is better health outcomes for our people. So ultimately, at the end of the day, by working together um, to provide services to uh, our people, is the ultimate goal is to really improve the health outcomes by involving people at the community level in the true partnership. That model does not exist in Canada. So in order to look at the disparities uh, in this country, um, in looking at the health outcomes of Aboriginal people, of our people, we need to look at um, different ways of delivering. We need to include Aboriginal people in, in how we govern and how we deliver programs. So that is the benefits. Um, not doing anything is not a solution. And so to today and over the last five years, you all have been working very, very hard to look at ways to uh, how do we work together uh, and how do we start addressing the health um, outcomes of, of, our, of our people. So I hope that answers. Yeah, excellent. That um, one of those concerns that we need to be addressing, and it's, uh, it's, it's probably the chronic concern, I'm sure you hear it everywhere you go, but how would you address the concerns that there's not enough funding in this agreement? And this was raised in a number of ways. Uh, current programs and services are already underfunded, and mm -hmm. in the dialogues there was a number of mentions of where that is the case, or where there are higher costs on the First Nations side. Where we're looking at uh, communities who have already been affected by funding cuts, mm -hmm. and we hear great commentary about the deficit reduction strategy that the federal government will be undertaking. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, of course, there are those needs that may arise that are currently not addressed or may not be seen to be included in this agreement. And then, of course, there are the pressing needs raised, particularly by the northern region, about the need for improved or new health facilities in the mm -hmm. north. Uh, let, me, let me start off by saying that um, there are huge demands for health services all over our country. Um, what we are looking at here is bringing all the partners together to address the community needs. Right now, the healthcare system we have is that the province delivers, the federal government delivers. 
bringing all partners together. Um, province of British Columbia is committed to it, as you had seen with the video, and being part of this process. Health Canada is committed to this process, but we also want to bring in First Nations to make better decisions on where their needs are. We need to be able to direct the investments where the needs are most needed in a collaborative and a partnership way. Health Canada, uh, as I stated before, we will continue to be a funding partner uh, in the delivery of uh, health to First Nations people. And for the very, very first time in the province of British Columbia, the provincial government has made financial commitments to provide services to First Nations people. So that this is what that agreement would Intel, it would bring us all together to start addressing um, the needs of, of in, for infrastructure, for programs, and what have you. The other part is that, um, that's so critical in my mind, is that we know best how we want to address um, program delivery in our communities as Aboriginal people. Currently, we don't have the mechanisms in place to get the input from Aboriginal people in the design of programs. I come from Nunavut. Nunavut is 11 years old. We're making huge uh, commitments to looking at ways to include Aboriginal people, Inuit people, in the design of healthcare services, the midwifery program, the nursing program, mental health programs, how do we fight tuberculosis, number of initiatives with Inuit people, by Inuit people, for Inuit people. We don't have that here. So, mm -hmm. so just in closing, to bringing our partners together, the province that has the resources to deliver Health Canada, the federal government, we can better allocate those resources to address our needs. So this is, um, I mean, and I said it before, we are partner to that, so I'll be committed to that as well. Thank you, Mr. Madam Minister. Will the federal government continue to provide other funding outside of this arrangement, and in particular outside of Health Canada, for such things as healing and reconciliation? Absolutely. What, what, there are a number of other programs through the Public Health Agency of Canada, through the Canadian Institute of Health Research, or NAHO. There are a number of programs outside of this. Um, any organizations, any community will continue to have uh, access to those programs through grants and contributions. Uh, what we're talking about here in this tripartite uh, discussions over the last five years is the direct programs. Everything that Health Canada currently uh, spends related to First Nations health is what um, we're talking about here. But not outside of that, uh, you will continue to have uh, access to other bro uh, grants and contribution programs. Okay. Thank you. Um, the other question that was forward to you, of course, was related to the fact that we now have a federal majority government. And so <laughs> um, much, much buzz in terms of what that might mean and what implications that has. And so the question was, what does Health Canada see as potential new opportunities or challenges that didn't exist with a minority government? And in particular, there was, there was some concern about a, a legislative framework, whether that's needed to fully mm -hmm. and properly implement this agreement mm -hmm. or whether it's needed to support this arrangement in the future. Mm -hmm. What, uh, for the next one, what, my, what I can say is that with a, with a government um, that will be in place for four years, I will be committed to, and I have been committed to, uh, working with British Columbia First Nations people the last, uh, since 2008. Um, and I would not be here if I did not think that this was doable, if I did not think that there were uh, merits with this type of um, discussions, and I believe in what you're doing. Um, I think you have done a fantastic job um, of bringing uh, your people together to today for a dis decision tomorrow. Um, and if I did not believe in that, I would not be here as an Aboriginal person myself. Um, in the next four years, um, should we reach an agreement tomorrow to move forward, I can tell you I will be continuing to uh, ensure that the rollout of that agreement is a success uh, in working with First, uh, First Nations people as well as the people uh, from um, British Columbia provincial government. Um, I am committed to that process, and in the next stable uh, four, four and a half years, we'll be able to continue that momentum, and I'm happy to be back uh, in this role to see this through. 
Uh, in terms of the legislative uh, framework, I know that has been discussed before. What I've said be, uh, to to number of the people I have talked to about that is that I am open to that. The province is is working uh, is also um, interested in looking at that. What I will say is that you know let's take it one step at a time get the agreement in place, get the governance structure in place, and have the governance group look at how that can evolve um, and have uh, time to evaluate how it's evolving or how it's been implemented and, uh, implemented and look at what that legislation would look like. So I am committed to working with the governance structure uh, to exploring ways of how we can um, improve that as well. Uh, thank you very much. There was one question we actually didn't send to you, but I, I'll pose it now. Just um, a grave concern for a lot of the, the uh, First Nations is how do we meet the health needs of our citizens, whether they're living in our communities or whether they're outside of our communities, particularly living in uh, urban environments. I guess really the question uh, to you, Madam Minister, is um, how do we work together to address that issue? Because right? that seems to be one of those intractable, interjurisdictional issues that we all struggle with. And the question is, how do we work together? How do we work together within this arrangement to? Mm -hmm. I, I think, as I stated before, is that um, through this, what is so, um, what, what makes me so excited about this work that you're doing is that um, by being at the table, you're actually making, will make decisions on how to the how-to, that's the very question. How do we work together? Uh, without the tripartite agreement, it will be status quo. Um, today and tomorrow, um, you have a huge decision you're going to make, and the decision really is quite simple in my mind. Um, first thing is, why are we doing this? We're doing this because the health outcome of Aboriginal people in this country continue to get worse. The second point is we're doing this because I believe that you need a role and First Nations people need to be involved to ensure that we are in the right direction to address the health outcomes that we're challenged with every day. Um, and status quo, in my opinion, is not going to solve that. So the tripartite uh, arrangement that we've been working with um, I think uh, is, is historic. Uh, I commend you all for working very hard to, to um, come together to a consensus. We will continue to be a partner. The province, the First Nations, and the federal government will continue to be partners after, you know, if we do decide to move forward after tomorrow's discussions. Um, and this is one model, the governance model, will ensure that you, uh, th through authority, will be involved in being a partner in coming up with those solutions through the governance structure. That's the first of its kind in this country. So tomorrow is a big decision that you will have to make. Um, and this model uh, includes First Nations in Canada for the first time. Um, so the how-to is this is one, 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 uh, one way of uh, involving First Nations. And tomorrow, you are going to make that decision whether you want to be involved or not. That's the decision you're making tomorrow. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Minister. Mm -hmm.